an absolutely beautiful winter site in front of me right now and another example of two different species interacting and socialising with one another. We've got two thrushes here, two winter thrushes. We've got the red wing and the field fair. They're easy to tell apart, the red wing's a little bit smaller and it's got a bit of red under its wing which is always very nice and it's also got an eye stripe whereas the field fair is a much bigger greyer bird with a nice yellow bill. It seems to be a lot more of a dominant character. I think I slightly prefer the field fair. But they're both really, really interesting. They Both of these species didn't spend the summer here at all. In fact, this is their summer holiday. They've come all the way from Scandinavia and up north to spend the winter here because it's too cold for them up north. So, you know, when you're there complaining about the British winter, there are some species which actually think it's rather tropical to where they usually spend their time. Really beautiful. It's one of those things for me which really signifies that winter is really, really here now. We're in the middle of winter when you start seeing these incredible flocks of red wing and field fare. Right, it's coming up to late afternoon now, so we're only a couple more hours till dusk now. I'm not staying here the whole night, that would be madness, but I am interested in seeing what creatures take over this habitat when the lights are out, when it's night, because no doubt a completely different cast of characters come out to play. The birds aren't active at night, well most aren't anyway, at least the ones we've seen, so the habitat is completely transformed, um, so it's like it's a completely different ecosystem, if you like. Now, mainly, I want to focus on the mammals, because mammals, apart from the deer, are something which we haven't seen that much today, and that's because most mammals are nocturnal. So how am I going to do that without actually being here? Well, I'm going to set some traps. So the first trap I'm going to set is this. It's something called a Longworth Mammal Trap. And I'm also going to set up one of these. This is a trap camera. What it does, we just leave it out here on this tree during the night. It's got a motion sensor on it and it'll take a photo whenever anything passes by. So I'm just going to put it up to this tree and leave it overnight and hopefully we'll get some interesting animals appearing. Right, as you can see there, the sun is setting, it's coming up to dusk. It's amazing how quickly it's gone, actually. And I've had a really lovely day. As I said, things did start to quiet and down in the afternoon, which is really, really interesting. But on the whole, I mean, it's just, it's just really, really nice to get so much fresh air for such a long time. It's been recently um, documented in the scientific literature now that, you know, Going outside into nature helps relieve anxiety, depression, uh, stress, all these sort of things. So it is definitely something which I recommend people doing because it is very, very good for the soul. I've suddenly realised I've lost my hat, so <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to go and see if I can retrieve it. Now I know that many of the birds that I've seen today are quite common, um, but that's not really the point really. Well, I mean, they're still beautiful for a start, but also it's about the diversity that's important. A single species on its own doesn't really do anything, but when you get loads of different species together interacting with each other, then you've got an ecosystem. And ecosystems are really, really special indeed. And that's why we need to conserve them.
And as if eight hours being out in the wilderness wasn't good enough, I found my hat.